are in the 13th day and uh, going into the second Shabbat in our 40 days. So first of all and most important, I know many people, they see the videos, they go on uh, YouTube and might not know that there are many other more videos that go on the website. The YouTube only a few videos go and the rest of the videos go on the website and on the video and in the end, in the beginning, there's the link to the actual page where all the videos are. So some people either register or didn't register, it doesn't really matter, but the point is that most of the videos go on the, on the website and not on YouTube and definitely not on uh, uh, Facebook. So we are in the uh, 13th day of our trip and I told you last Shabbat to uh, for the ones who listen to make a list and to write in that list uh, the all the parts all the things that uh, represents the better you and then of course to go after it and do it now what you need to do now Friday uh, Friday evening is the best time to do tshuva for the whole week Shem gave us a few key key points, a few places on the timeline when it's a very auspicious time to do tshuva. Of course, the highlight of all is Yom Kippur, and before that we have 40 days of a period to do tshuva, the whole month of Elul, and then we have every Rosh Chodesh is a time to do tshuva. I mean, technically any time is good to do tshuva, but you have certain stops on the express train to do tshuva. One of the most powerful times to do tshuva is on Friday evening, right before Shabbat comes, Erev Shabbat. And the way to do tshuva, and of course, uh, not to ignore, once a day on Kriyat Shema Lamita, when you're sitting on your bed moments before you go to bed, then you do tshuva for the day. If a person is smart, then he does tshuva every day on Kriyat Shema Shalamita, but that re does real tshuva, not... Uh, it's not tshuva. Sits for five minutes, ten minutes, summarize the day, and, and then repents, makes a list of uh, notes what needs to be done, and then goes to sleep. That's the right way. If you do tshuva every day, then Yom Kippur, you don't need to do it anything but fast, because every day you do tshuva. But Friday evening, it's not really evening, rather it's called Erev Shabbat, the eve of Shabbat. It's a very auspicious time to do tshuva. And that's why we prepare ourselves, we go to the mikveh, stop working a few hours prior to that, preparing the house, preparing for Shabbat. But one should take 10 minutes, 5 minutes, a minute, 15 minutes, whatever you can uh, spare from your precious time uh, off Facebook, then uh, you sit and you do tshuva. What was the week like? So you take on one side the list that I told you to prepare in the beginning, which is the, the summary and the breakdown of the better version of you, what would you would want to be, and now you make another list on the other side, what did you actually do this week? And you have to be very honest, you can't uh, round corners. And then uh, you say, okay, I wanted to wake up every morning at four, and this week I woke up four days at four, one day was 4.30, one day was five, and you just write it down. And whatever you put yourself to do, I mean, we took on ourselves many things. You have to make a checklist. Did I read Tehillim every day after Shacharit? Check. Did I read Tikkun Memchet? Check. Did I do Tikkun Aklali? Check. Did I do Shira Shirim? Check. I mean, maybe there's not so many checks there. But the point is that you have to come to a list of what you, did, what you wanted to do, what you put yourself as a goal to do, what you failed. Now, uh, you don't have to tell me that, and chas we don't, uh, we don't want to embarrass anybody, but many of us, we have a lot of hopes, goals, and desires, but it doesn't always come exactly how I want. And even in these last 13 days, uh, I'm sure that many who participate not really follow the whole thing. And one night they forgot Kirat Shmalamita, one morning forgot to put the water next to the bed, one morning they to, to forgot to do this, one night forgot to do that. I'm not saying everybody, but uh, uh, there's a large amount of people that could very much be that they didn't do the whole thing. Point what you want to do now before Shabbat comes in. Take 10 minutes out of your time and, and see what you did this week. 
so you can tap yourself on the back and see what you didn't do this week so you can say okay these are the things I need to focus on the next week and I will do now tshuva before Shabbat tshuva that I repent uh, I feel bad and whatever it is for not doing it and you make yourself a little list of the points what you didn't do this week that you need to do the next week and you go into the Shabbat with already with a, with the mindset okay the week was not too bad I reached 70 percent of my goal I reached 20 percent of my goal I reached 100 percent of my goal 100 percent cannot be but unless you're a very special person like your mom tells you and uh, but uh, but nevertheless you want to work in some type of a system because if there's not going to be a system then you fail and you prepare this list before Shabbat you can do it now it doesn't have to be three minutes before Shabbat it can be five hours before Shabbat but the point to take is that you want to come to Shabbat when you're ready after you showered after you mixed with you're ready wearing your Shabbat clothes you read whatever you want to read whatever you set yourself to read there's a mitzvah to reach time which we're going to talk about it right after this class what it really means but you want to come to Shabbat prepared. Don't come in the last minute and a half and running like a chicken without a head and starting to turn things on and off. And, but rather come into the Shabbat prepared. Why? Because if you come clean and after Tshuva into Shabbat, the Shabbat will assist you to elevate you to the next level. Why? Because the Zohar says that everything that you do on Shabbat with the right intention will affect the next week. Kulu yamin midbarchin mine. All the days after Shabbat, they belong to the Shabbat. The Shabbat, so to say, a lot of people think seeing, because Hashem rested on the seventh day. From Sunday to Friday, Hashem created the world, and Friday, Saturday rested. I am just saying my twist right now. Don't take my words out of context. But I see the completely the opposite. Hashem rested prior to the first day of creation and then Sunday started to create the world have you ever thought of that <coughs> Hashem rested before that it's not that suddenly Sunday everything appeared so first of all was Shabbat was a state of rest state of a nothingness and from that came the creation and then the seventh day of creation it's not the seventh day of creation and the creation finished and the story put a period there and then comes Shabbat but so Shabbat started before that what was before the first day of creation nothing which means there was a now of course there was a Shem Echad and Shmo Echad but there was a nothing which means that Shabbat Hashem already rested prior to that and again I'm just trying to add a twist here don't now come and say that I'm changing the entire Torah I'm not changing the Torah I'm just telling you what was before the first day Right? Bereshit bara lokim to shamayim v'taharetz. What was the, before that? It was Hashem, Echad, and Shmo Echad. There was only Hashem there. What was he doing there? He was doing exactly what he's doing on Shabbat. Nothing. Technically. So if the Zohar says, Kulu yamin midbar chil mineh, which means that all the days, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, they are birthed out of Shabbat. So again, not to completely go, go off our track, which means that what I focus on Shabbat it will affect the entire week. Now, why is the preparation for Shabbat important? Because every mitzvah that you do, the preparation is important. We already mentioned that in some cases the preparation is more important than the mitzvah. So the preparation for Shabbat is how you enter the Shabbat. Clean, mind is organized, no rush, no breathing and uh, sweating because you ran like a maniac. 7 o'clock in the morning, you have a lot, a lot of time to prepare. Don't prepare at 4.30, when then that way you're pushing it to the last moment. I told you already to prepare already from Wednesday to do your shopping, Thursday to wash your clothes, Friday is just to do tshuva and, and maybe stir the soup or something. So you want to sit before Shabbat, go through what you achieved throughout this week, and you achieved a lot because you put a lot of effort. And you have to recognize the fact that your effort brought results. It's not about being uh, arrogant or have an ego. You have to have some type of a, a reward system to yourself. Yes, I did great this week. I woke up every morning. I came to all the minyanim. I learned. I applied what I learned. 
but there's all the stuff that we didn't do. So for the what stuff you did, you give yourself a round of applause. And for the one you didn't do, you write it down and say, okay, next week, I really want to focus on this A, B, and C. How do you get the greatest motivation and energy to do that? Do that on Shabbat. So you didn't say uh, uh, every day, Tikkun HaKlali, on Shabbat, make sure you're saying it. Why? Because it will affect the next week. The whole week you were late to the Minyan, make sure that on Shabbat you're not late to the Minyan. You didn't uh, do something on, during the week, or you're going to your list. So make sure you're doing it on Shabbat. And with the intention, I want to better my behavior. I want to better my, my uh, Yirat Shamaim. I want to better my action. And what better day to do it is to accept it prior to Shabbat. So I enter the Shabbat with the right mindset. That Shabbat, I'm really on my best behavior. And it doesn't mean you're not going to mess up on Shabbat. But at least you have the intention. Our sages say, Machshavah tova, Kadosh Buhu metzarfa lemaseh. When you have the right intention, the Kadosh Buhu adds it to help you do the action. And there are a few ways, other ways to interpret this, uh, this uh, text. But you prepare for Shabbat, you do it on Shabbat, the next week you'll come already with the energy of Shabbat that was blessing the days of the week, that whatever you wanted to achieve and didn't do this week, next week you'll do it. And then you rinse and repeat, by the way. I told you already, when you're looking at a graph of like uh, economics or the stocks, uh, so you see it goes up a little bit down, goes up a little bit down, goes up a little bit down. That's how our graph needs to look. Well, there's no stop. It's just going up. But on the way, there'll be a few yeridot, a few times that you go down, but you shoot up. That's why I said the 40 days. Ignore the word 40. Rather, concentrate on the word days. Every day, we grow and grow and grow. So everything that we say, rinse and repeat. So next Friday, you'll be in a higher level than this Friday. But you'll still have a few going down throughout the week. But next Friday, you do the exact same thing. And then the following Friday, the next thing, and the following, and the following, and the following. Till Hashem comes back to this world. That we all, all flesh will see that the mouth of Hashem, that's the mouth that spoke. And says, Finally, we get to see our master with our own eyes. Have a wonderful, restful, beautiful, spiritual, meaningful Shabbat.